What's going on, Brock? Hey, Brock, my shoulder hurts really bad. When a patient initially presents with an injury, a careful history and subjective evaluation should be performed. First, let the patient explain what happened in their own words. The examiner should listen and pick up clues from the patient's description of the injury. The examiner should then ask the patient questions to obtain more information. These questions should include, what is the main complaint? Have you ever hurt your shoulder before? When and where did this happen? Where is most of your pain? What kind of pain is it? Did you feel or hear anything? Anything make it worse or better? Or have you changed any training, mechanics, or activities recently? Where is it bothering you the most? Oh, uh, just here in the back. Okay. Back here? Yeah. Feel anything pop? Feel anything cold? Do you hear anything? The next step in the shoulder evaluation process is inspection and palpation. During inspection, the examiner should look for obvious deformity swelling and discoloration, general posture and carrying angles, as well as any scars, open wounds, cuts, or abrasions. During palpation, the examiner checks the patient's bone, muscle, and other soft tissue for areas of point tenderness, change in tissue density, including scarring, spasm, swelling, and calcification, deformity, temperature change, and texture. Palpation should be assessed on both the injured and uninjured side to get a clear comparison bilaterally of all tissues. After inspection and palpation, the next step is to assess the patient's passive range of motion. The patient can be seated or supine while the examiner stabilizes the glenohumeral joint while the shoulder is taken through passive range of motion. These passive range of motions should include flexion, extension, ab and adduction, horizontal ab and adduction, as well as internal and external rotation. During this assessment, the evaluator should make note of any direction that the patient is lacking any passive range of motion. Active range of motion should also be assessed during the shoulder evaluation. The patient should be able to move their arms and shoulders through the full range of motion. This includes flexion to 180 degrees, abduction to 180 degrees, extension to 60 degrees, as well as internal rotation to 90 degrees, and external rotation to 90 to 100 degrees. The examiner should note any direction that the patient lacks a full active range of motion. Scapular range of motion should also be assessed because of its role in active shoulder range of motion. A quick and easy way to test for shoulder active range of motion is by the use of Apley scratch test. The three test positions take the patient through all active range of motion used by the shoulder and scapula. Okay. To assess strength during the shoulder evaluation, manual muscle testing is used. The patient is asked to go through the full active range of motion in each direction of the shoulder against the provided resistance by the examiner. Each test is completed bilaterally and the examiner gives a subjective grade on a scale of 0 to 5. A manual muscle test where the injured side is equally as strong as the uninjured side is given a grade of 5 out of 5. A manual muscle test where the injured side is not as strong as the uninjured side is given a grade of 4 out of 5. A manual muscle test where the patient cannot go against the examiner's resistance but can move through the full active range of motion is given a grade of 3 out of 5. Next, the sternoclavicular and acromioclavicular joints are checked for mobilization. The examiner should assess both the SC and the AC joints for their normal movements. The examiner should also assess the glenohumeral joint motion. Anterior glides, posterior glides, and inferior glides should all be able to be performed without any pain or apprehension from the patient.
Our first special test is the acromioclavicular traction test. The patient is positioned either seated or standing with the GH joint in neutral and their arm hanging by their side. The examiner applies a downward traction on the humerus while palpating for a step deformity along the AC joint. A positive test may indicate a sprain of the AC or costoclavicular ligaments. A commonly used test for anterior shoulder instability is the apprehension test. The patient is positioned supine while the examiner passively moves the glenohumeral joint into external rotation. A positive test would be the patient's apprehension or unwillingness to allow this motion by the examiner. One of two commonly used tests for shoulder impingement is the NEAR test. The examiner places the glenohumeral joint in internal rotation and the forearm in pronation. The examiner then forcefully moves the glenohumeral joint through the full range of motion and flexion. If pain is reproduced during the test, it's possible that the supraspinatus tendon or the long head of the biceps brachii is being impinged during this motion. An alteration to the near test can be performed by placing the patient's hand on their opposite shoulder and the examiner forcefully moving the glenohumeral joint through flexion. Another common test for shoulder impingement is the Hawkins-Kennedy test. The patient's elbow is flexed and the glenohumeral joint is elevated to 90 degrees in the scapular plane. The humerus is then passively internally rotated till pain is noted. The empty can test is used to diagnose supraspinatus tendinopathies. The patient raises their arm to a 90 degree angle in the scapular plane while the examiner applies a downward pressure against resistance. The drop arm test is used to diagnose rotator cuff tendinopathy. The patient's arms are fully abducted and slowly lowered back to neutral. A positive test would show an uncontrolled arm drop below 90 degrees of abduction. Bicepital tendinopathies can be diagnosed by using Jurgensen's test. The patient sits or stands with their arm at neutral and elbow bent at 90 degrees. The examiner attempts to externally rotate and pronate the patient's arm against resistance. Another test for bicepital tendinopathy is Speed's test. The patient sits with their arm in neutral, elbow extended, and palm supinated. The examiner allows the patient to move through full arm flexion with resistance while palpating over the bicepital groove. O'Brien's is used to test for slap lesions and AC joint pathology. The patient's arm is put in 90 degrees of flexion with slight adduction. The examiner applies a downward force against the patient's resistance. The patient is then put back in the test position with palm supination and the test is repeated. A positive test will have decreased pain during the second portion of the test. Another special test for labral tears is the jerk test. The patient's arm is held at 90 degrees while the arm is internally rotated. The examiner then passively horizontally adducts the arm with a simultaneous axial load. A positive test will be a clunk that may or may not be painful. All of these basic steps and tests, as well as many others, will ensure that your shoulder evaluation is complete and thorough.